We're going to talk about cookbooks because they are much more than just collections of recipes. They're windows into different culinary worlds and treasured possessions that bring joy to countless people around the globe. It also brings a lot of joy to our very own Pei Chen, who's been collecting them for decades, years. What do I want, like, I mean, you're not like I'm 90. I'm, no, I'm 87, <laughs> so I've been collecting them for eight decades. She's been collecting them for a while. So tell me about your love for cookbooks. Like, how did this all start? Uh, well, you know, I did not love cookbooks as a child. We didn't, I don't have memories of them being in our house yeah. at all. It really yeah. started, I would say, my very early 20s uh, when I was finishing university, and suddenly I was on my own. I had no money, mm -hmm. so it wasn't like I could enjoy eating out. I had to cook for myself, and I really, I just didn't have the skills whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and I really, like, my mom's a fabulous cook, but she didn't, she didn't grow up cooking either. Like, when my parents immigrated to Canada, she had to kind of learn how to cook. She also had to learn how to adapt to local ingredients and right. also the ingredients that she couldn't find that she was looking for and, yes. and wanted. And something that I found only very recently was a stack of these lined notebooks of my mom's from when she was much younger. I don't know if they started in her teens, if it was in her 20s, perhaps. Okay. But she basically, um, in magazines or, let's say, brochures, she would cut out recipes. She would cut out the photos perfectly. She would glue them together. She'd make little notes. And this is a stack of books. Basically, she made her own cookbooks. Oh, my goodness. She even had an index. She had, like, a table of contents. So she actually categorized them all. And it's fascinating to me that she was doing this, you know, gluing little photos yes. together, cutting the recipes. And when I asked her about it um, recently when I found them, she said, well, cook, cook, cook books were expensive yes. you know so wherever she could find little recipes she kept them for herself I don't I know you need to like put that in a safe in a yeah. fire safe because that is your family history yes. like what a beautiful thing to have from your mom yeah and honestly like there's some beautiful dishes in her homemade cookbooks that yes. I don't recall ever eating so I'm not sure <laughs> I don't think she You're actually like, made them did all. Did you want to try making Like a this? little bit aspirational, perhaps, <laughs> like a lot of cookbooks are, to be honest. Right. And then I also found um, in my parents' house uh, just a couple of years ago, um, a, there's three volumes to, this, to these books. So this is Pei Mei's Chinese cookbook. And what's great is that it's written in Chinese and English. Oh, so the okay. recipes were actually translated um, by the author herself. So she nice. was a very well-known Taiwanese um, cookbook author, born in 1931. She passed away in 2004. She has over 30 cookbooks on Chinese cuisine. Mm -hmm. For over 40 years, she hosted cooking shows on Taiwanese television. She also t uh, taught cooking classes. And wow. of course, her audience was mostly um, housewives, right? In yes. the beginning, because you're yeah. looking at the early 60s. Mm -hmm. And then she also taught to the wives of American military officials who were stationed in Taiwan. Oh my gosh, and so that's, that's so cool. where, you know, so she was fluent in several languages. Yeah. And just books like this, I find um, so interesting and also like a really great reflection of how kind of early Chinese cuisine may have been translated into um, English for like a North American and yep. Western palate as well. And the recipes, I have to tell you, they're extremely basic. Like I feel like a lot of steps are missing because these days <laughs> recipes can be like three pages long. And some of this is like, put lard in, mix and cook. And it's like, oh, okay, I'll just figure that out later. <laughs> You had three steps, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you have a memory of your very first cookbook? I do. So again, um, through university, it was like, you know, you eat a lot of pasta, Absolutely. canned soup, you know, whatever was Tuna. easy. And I remember, because um, I used to get the Toronto Star, my roommates and I, we shared a subscription to the newspaper. That's amazing. And there was always a great food section. I remember um, someone writing a review about cookbooks. Yeah. And it was like the joy of cooking. I think I'd come out with like a newer edition in the, in the late 90s. Yeah. And I live near the Eaton Center. Yes. And so Eaton's had this Joy of Cooking, this is my first cookbook, uh, and it was $40. And for me as a student, uh, I was just, it was too expensive. I waited until there was a 25% off sale. Yes, you and did. And I went in there and I bought it for $30. And the Joy of Cooking, um, there's been a newer edition since then, yeah. but like it really is such a great Bible for someone who really had no cooking knowledge or ability. I did, I was a little disappointed when I realized there weren't a lot of photos in it when right. I got the book, <laughs> but I still have it to this day and it's a great reference. That's amazing and everybody needs that, right? And I love that all the little post-its are still in there for you. <laughs> I don't even know what I marked off, but they're there. <laughs> you've got uh, a bunch of thrifted books that you've yeah. also uh, gotten, so this is your passion. You'll go around collecting them. <sighs> Here's the thing is like, I love going to yard sales and there'll be all these mm. like books and for whatever reason, they're all like 20 pounds each. Like, yeah, you huge. know, this one is like almost uh, 1,500 pages 
pages, Whoa. and they're cheap, so it's like, it's, it's $2, and you're like, I got 20 bucks, I'm gonna buy a whole collection. <laughs> um, this one, the American Woman's Cookbook, this was first published in 1938. Okay. Uh, it was a staple in American kitchens, over 4,000 recipes. It's just really a great reflection on the time as yes. well. So I love a little bit of that cultural, culinary history. Miss mm -hmm. um, Beaton's book of cookery and household management. It's a cookbook, it has tips on cleaning, laundry, home maintenance, first aid, how to run a household. Oh, These well, are I need very to read that one. They're very much targeted towards housewives, yeah. as you can imagine, right? Yeah, well, now we got to work and run the house. Exactly. So like, turn to page 30 so I yeah. can see what I'm doing wrong. And these are hefty, like, they're really hefty books, and they're just so comprehensive, and it's really interesting to, to read some of the things and also yeah. to look at some of the recipes, and you're like, oh, I can see why that fell out of fashion. <laughs> <laughs> a pickle and a piece of cheese. Yeah, okay, it's what, in there. <laughs> you know that recipe. <laughs> Sounds very 50s. Okay, talk to me about these other uh, cute books that you've gathered Right, for so us. all of these books are from my home collection of which I have many and I want to yes. show you some of my favorites so these two I absolutely love they're just like very I've actually traveled with this book to visit my niece and nephew because oh, nice. it's easy cookies cakes Julie Van Rosendahl she's a Canadian cookbook author and a food writer based in Calgary mm -hmm. she self-published these books with very like homey and very easy to make recipes okay. other ones I love Jenny's ice cream this is actually my favorite mm. ice cream book okay. um, it has amazing recipes easy to do you can pick up very inexpensive ice cream makers you don't need to spend over hundred dollars you can get them at a lot of those secondhand thrift stores for like ten dollars because people have gotten rid of them Yeah, um, and just like some of my other favorites like you know on butchery Peter Sanigan is a Toronto butcher did a great book on how to save money on like knowing what cuts to buy mm -hmm. how to cook them um, and a really wonderful selection Anna Olson is a well-known Canadian pastry chef she taught me how to bake that's what I say because Amazing. I watched her on TV and then I started with her recipes first and this is just really kind of like my little collection of stories yeah she's like one of the best of the best so it's amazing you can bring that talent right into your house with a book hey thank Thank you for that. You're welcome.